my name is Nicholas Tate. I am the Southern Wintering Project Lead for Dairy NZ. And as Olivia said, I'm just going to go over a, a, a few areas of good management practice, particularly to the environment, and what are those benefits look like and things like that, and then cover off a bit of the regulation. So the first area I really want to talk to is um, our first good management area is really around buffer areas. So, um, and, and that comprises of two areas, which are critical source areas and waterway buffers. So, um, critical source areas and waterways are one, uh, one of the most effective good management practices that only really require planning. So critical source areas are those areas in the paddock that accumulate water and nutrients during rainfall, those swales, those depression areas. Um, what we're saying around good management practice is it's ideally um, better if you leave these areas uncultivated and in grass. So part of that planning is really important for them. But we understand that some of you may have planted these in crop already. So for that, what we're saying is save those areas. Let them be a sort of a natural sort of a filter for any overland flow that might happen as a last bite when you can use when you can graze them in really dry conditions. So having buffers to those critical source areas is really important to limit that overland flow. In terms of waterway buffers, what we're saying is, in terms of a good management practice, is really think about your buffer zone towards those waterways. Um, a minimum of five metres and having stock excluded from that is really important to act as that filter. And if your slope does increase um, leading into those waterways or critical source areas, then think about your buffer distances there. They should increase as well. And that's so that we do limit any losses in soil and nutrients from the paddock and we actually provide a buffer to waterways and um, reduce any of that overland flow of nutrients and soil that might happen. The second good management area um, I want to cover off is really around strategic, strategic directional grazing and many of you have probably heard of this, it really talks to top to bottom grazing the crop and that's once again to provide that buffer that, that can for the crop that can absorb or infiltrate any overland flow. Now some of you may be saying that top to bottom doesn't work in my situation and we do understand that every paddock is unique and, and um, challenging but there's many different ways to look at this and it's really around focusing on trying to graze towards those critical source areas or waterways to provide that um, buffer and that, that, well, that crop buffer. So you might not be able to directly go from the top of the paddock to the bottom, but think about how you could do that differently. And remembering that the key goal here is to provide as much of a buffer to those, um, to those waterways or critical source areas as possible, so that the crop actually will absorb or, or slow down any overland flows. This was really demonstrated in 2011 to 2014 at the Telford Research Farm, where they did a, a research trial under the Pastoral 21 project. And they looked at uh, two, as you can see in the picture there, two different paddocks that were right next to each other that had critical source areas in them. And they, they, what they did was they took this, uh, a mob of cows and, and sheep as well and, and looked at different ways of grazing. So for the first year in the control, what they did is in the green, you can see on the, on the right hand side is they grazed um, normally from the bottom to the top, didn't protect that critical source area. And then they, on the left hand side, they took a, a different approach, grazed from the top to the bottom, swung around to the sides of that critical source area and really protected that, and then used that area as a last bite, bite situation and grazed it in, um, only in dry conditions. The next year they swapped that over to obviously provide the control. And what they really found from that is that that top to bottom strategic grazing towards critical source areas and the protection of critical source areas re reduced the sediment runoff and nutrients and overland flow by about 80%, which is for a small amount of um, practice changes, a really big benefit to keeping that soil in your paddock where it can, where it's most benefit and the nutrients as well. The third area um, that I want to talk to is uh, around reducing stock movement. And why we need, why we need to think about reducing stock movement is to, to remain, to limit soil damage or any sort of pugging or anything like that. It's really important that we try to keep a fresh break in front of the cows as we feed them and limit them having to move backwards and forwards to campsite like, campsites like water troughs. So what we're saying is there's three areas here that to, to thinking about reducing the stock movement. So using portable troughs where possible, that gives them access to clean fresh water each day right next to the break or right next to their feed so they don't have to travel too far. 
and think about where you place that in the paddock because obviously it is a, a an issue or it can be challenging for your staff to actually move that portable trough so keeping it at the side of the brake right near the front fence is a really good option um, but actually limiting your saw, any soil damage or any hugging issues is using portable troughs is a really good way. Also um, back fencing those, um, the crop, so making sure that you are regularly moving that back fence up and that's really trying to limit those campsites and, and keeping areas that, are, that have good soil structure that may not be damaged and uh, good for maybe later use and adverse weather. But also if they do have an issue where it does rain and they hug that one area, then you can move them on past that over time and it allows for that soil to, to recuperate. So using, um, shifting your back fences regularly is really important. And then with baleage, using those, um, using ring feeders, trying to make sure that the cows uh, utilise as much as possible of that um, supplementary feed and not lying down on it. So placing the, that supplemental bales away from waterways in critical source areas and using those bale feeders to improve utilisation. I just want to move on now to talking about uh, what the regulation looks like and obviously I can only talk with a limited time talk for a couple of minutes on this but um, if anybody wants any more information please get hold of your regional council um, That's my first comment. So for Environment Southland and, and the Southland region they do have some wintering rules in the proposed Southland water and plan South and, South and Land and Water Plan. And it is important to note that this plan is not operative yet, but there is some, um, some things that we, need, we can get on with, but um, I'll talk to more of that. So what that rule says is intensive winter grazing is a permitted activity, as long as the following conditions are met. And that is that no more than 15% of the area of land holding or 100 hectares, whichever is lesser, is, um, that's the size of your crop, that you have a farm environment plan that's cover wintering which includes good management practice. And if you can't adhere to those good management practices due to circumstances, then you must have a 20 meter buffer to a waterway. Otherwise, if you can't meet these conditions, then uh, a land use consent for wintering is required. And, uh, and there's a really good question and answer section on Environment Southland's website that covers that. Having said that, there's, there's some other rules that we need to think about, um, and they're existing use rights rules. So, in the um, RMA there's a section that covers that and it basically says if you're not um, changing your activity in terms of size or scale compared to your other years then you can carry on with that without a consent as a proposed plan. But um, what would trigger this if, it's, if, the, if there is a change to scope, so, um, scale or intensity in your wintering in which case uh, and that can constitute a number of different things and if that's the case then you might need a consent. So the message from us is to talk to um, Environment South and Land Sustainability or Consents Team to get some clarification around that. But the examples of changes to scale, to scope or intensity is if you're adding cow numbers or stock numbers, if you're adding, changing the area of your, or increasing the area of your intensity winter graze area, or if you've bought a new property and you intend to intensively winter graze there that previously hadn't done it. So those would constitute a change to intensity. So making sure that you have that conversation with Environment South and, and they'll guide you through that. But they do understand also that this is unprecedented times with issues around getting stock off farm to the meat processes. So um, uh, have a chat to them and they can help you stick you through that. Obviously, um, for those farmers that are in uh, Otago, uh, Otago Regional Council also has some regulations. So they, uh, uh, less prescriptive, but they do talk to some of the same things. So um, they currently have an Otago Regional Water Plan and it has two areas that covers intensive winter grazing. The first is really talks to sediment management and what it says is you must have a measure in place where the, there is disturbed land. And disturbed land does constitute winter grazing or cultivation or anything like that. And what they say is that measure can be, um, it can be farm specific, so anything like a buffer zone or a protection of a critical source area or um, protecting uh, waterways, those are measures that they talk to. So um, that's what they're kind of talking about there. They also, for any stock that might have access to waterways, um, what they say is there can be no slumping, pugging or erosion of the stream bank and that there's no change in visual color or clarity to the, um, to the waterway. So they're more effects based in the way that they approach that. Having said that, they also do have, um, they have a notified plan change that's coming up in um, May 
and that does have more prescriptive rules in it that they've only just announced around intensive winter grazing. And they say, it, very similar to Southland, uh, that intensive winter grazing is a permitted activity, provided the area is less than 10% or 100 hectares of the total land holding, that there's no grazing of critical source areas, top to bottom grazing, and the buffer zone of 10 metres or 10 metres to waterways. Otherwise, consent could be required. Having said that, this is just start of a, a plan change, so there's obviously going to be appeals and a legal process. And they, would, they are still subject to those existing use rights rules where you, if there's no change and it's still a proposed plan, then you can carry on. Um, no change to scale or intensity, then you can uh, operate under those ex existing use rights.